Hey everyone, it's John Reed here, author of 110 Things to See with a Telescope, and this is a very special video for two reasons. Reason number one, I get to review a telescope that I've wanted to review for quite some time. Reason number two is this is my first ever sponsored video. That's right, I was fortunate enough to have All Star Telescope reach out to me and ask if I would review one of their telescope bundles, a bundle that includes this Skywatcher telescope. So join me as we have some fun exploring the night sky with the Skywatcher Star Travel 102 AZ-3. This is Learn to Stargaze. Okay, so we might as well dive right in. Let's open the box and set up the telescope. All right, so what's in the box? Well, we've got a 25 millimeter eyepiece offering 20 times magnification. We've got a 10 millimeter eyepiece offering 50 times magnification. Now, All Star Telescope also sent me this six element five millimeter eyepiece made by Celestron. This will boost this telescope's magnification up to 100 times and 200 times if we add a Barlow. Now, this telescope comes with a 45 degree diagonal. Now these are used so that the telescope can be used for terrestrial observation. Now the challenge with the 45 degree diagonal is that the telescope becomes difficult to use when pointed high in the sky. I'll switch this for a 90 degree diagonal when I go to look at things in space. Now if you look online, this telescope regularly comes with a finder telescope, but All Star telescopes seem to have included a red dot finder instead. For deep sky objects, you'll definitely want to swap out that finder scope for a basic red dot finder like this, or ideally a bullseye finder like the Star Pointer Pro or Rigel Quick Finder. Now if you look at almost any page in the book 110 Things to See with a Telescope, you'll see these bullseyes on every page. To find your target, you simply line up the finder until the bullseye is in the same position in the sky as it appears on the page. Now for some basic stats on this telescope. This telescope has an aperture of 102 millimeters. That's about 4 inches or 10.2 centimeters. This gives you a theoretical resolving power of 1.13 arc seconds, or just, let me do some math here, 2.1 kilometers on the surface of the moon. The focal length is listed at 500 millimeters in the specifications and 510 millimeters in the product description. If anyone knows why they've listed two focal lengths for the same lens, let me know in the comments. The highest useful magnification is rated at 204 times. Now they've arrived at this by doubling the aperture in millimeters. The telescope also came with tools like a screwdriver and two wrenches for adjusting the mount. They sent a selection of filters. I'm guessing we have red, green, blue, and moon. And the lens cap, this is kind of cool. The center comes off and that's for viewing bright objects like the moon to cut down on the glare. So now we're gonna align the finder to the telescope. Aligning the finder to the telescope is much easier to do during the day, and it also helps, especially with a refractor like this, to stargaze from a chair. So to align the finder to the telescope, first we turn it on with this knob here, and then I'm gonna point the finder at a distant chimney. Then we're gonna align the telescope itself so that the telescope is pointed precisely at the chimney. Then we're gonna go back to the finder and move this knob here to move the finder left and right, and this knob here to move the finder up and down until the red dot is precisely on the chimney. Then we're gonna go back to the telescope, and back to the finder, and back to the telescope, and just confirm that the telescope and the finder are pointed at exactly the same spot. Okay, so now some things I really like about this telescope. You can tell from the construction of this telescope that it is a very high quality. There are a lot of telescopes out there for beginners, and when beginners move on, they sell their beginner telescopes and move on to something larger. This doesn't seem like a telescope you sell. This is a precision instrument that you keep for your entire life, put in your will, and pass down to your grandchildren. I also like the 500 millimeter focal length. You'll notice that the focal length of this telescope is much shorter than most other refractors with the same aperture. Now this telescope and this telescope have the same aperture. This telescope and this telescope collect the same amount of light and have the same resolution. Because this telescope's focal ratio is so low at around five, 
the colors in the light spectrum might not come into focus at the same time. This is called chromatic aberration, and there's a risk that it will distort our views of bright objects like the moon and planets. So that's just something we're going to have to test. I love that this telescope includes a 2-inch focuser. It can be upgraded to a 2-inch diagonal with a large 2-inch eyepiece for stunning views of the sky. Like this. I'm confident that the views through this setup will be amazing. I also like these tube mounting rings. That means that the telescope is not directly fixed to the mount. So if you move this telescope to an equatorial mount, you can rotate the telescope within the ring so that the focuser assembly is right side up. And one of the best features of all, these slow motion controls on the mount. Slow motion controls massively reduce the stress of keeping the telescope on target. One thing to mention about these slow motion controls, they're fine motion controls. You'll need to center them before use. For large movements of the telescope, you push the telescope manually. And if you're using a cell phone to take photos of the moon, and you have a cell phone adapter like the next YZ, it will be much, much easier to keep your target in the field of view. If you're looking to make any of these upgrades, definitely check out All Star Telescope's website. They're based here in Canada, but they ship to the USA and other countries as well. I'll place some additional links in the description for the accessories mentioned in this video. All Star Telescope also carries several of my books, so check those out as well. If you're having trouble knowing where to point your telescope, or if you're simply running low on targets, check out 110 Things to See with a Telescope or 50 Things to See on the Moon. I happen to know that some of you are bird watchers. Now, I've never done it before, but I'm guessing this telescope might be pretty good at it, so I'm going to give it a shot. You know what? I don't know what kind of bird that is though. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> okay, if we want to take photos with this telescope using a DSLR, we're going to do it at what's called prime focus. That means there's no glass between the sensor on the camera and the lens at the front of the telescope. It's just a straight open tube. And the way we're going to achieve that is with what's called a T adapter. So this is a specific T adapter for the camera, and we're going to screw that right into the camera like that. Now we're going to remove the diagonal as well as this two inch to one and a quarter inch adapter. Then the camera should slide into the telescope like this. You're going to lock it in place with the screws, find a distant target, turn the camera on, set it to live mode, and check the focus. All right, let's take some photos. Now we're here at the Northwest Arm, it's 5 a.m. and we're going to use the Star Travel 102 to capture this lunar eclipse. Right, we're here, it's night, and I've got the telescope pointed at the moon. Now we're going to test the telescope using the 25 millimeter, the 10 millimeter, and the 5 millimeter eyepiece and see how it does. I'm also going to add the moon filter and test that as well. Okay, I can see a little bit of chromatic aberration. That's the 25 millimeter, and I can see a great view of the moon there. Wow, all right, well, the 10 millimeter is offering a really great close up view of the moon. All right, now moving on to this high performance eyepiece by Celestron offering 100 times magnification. And wow, are we ever zoomed in. 
fantastic. Now in all three eyepieces, I'm seeing chromatic aberration and the way it's showing itself is in a blue halo around the moon. I'm gonna put on the moon filter and see if that helps, but really I don't find it that annoying. And the way you add the moon filter is you screw it into the bottom of the eyepiece, just like this, put it back in the telescope, and then you refocus the telescope. Wonderful. Okay, so with the moon filter, the chromatic aberration is almost gone. Okay, now we're observing Jupiter in these three eyepieces. So with the 25 millimeter eyepiece, I can definitely notice that chromatic aberration. Jupiter's got some reds, greens, and blues all around it. So I can see Jupiter and I can see the four Galilean moons, no problem. Wow, moving over to the 10 millimeter eyepiece provides a much clearer view. Using the 10 millimeter eyepiece, I can clearly see the two main cloud belts on Jupiter's surface. And with the five millimeter eyepiece, we have an absolutely fantastic view of Jupiter. Jupiter and its moons fill the field of view. And I think if Jupiter's red spot were on this side of the planet, we'd be able to see it. So Nicholas at All-Star Telescope recommended I try the blue filter on Jupiter. So I'm gonna try that now and see what it does. Yeah, I think Nicholas is right. Using the blue filter brings out a lot of the contrast in Jupiter's clouds and I can really see some fine detail. That's fantastic. It does give Jupiter a bit of a blue halo, but if I can see more details on the surface, I'd consider that a win. Okay, now we're gonna look at Saturn with these three eyepieces. Starting with the 20 millimeter eyepiece. Okay, it's in there, but it's so small at 20 times magnification, you can barely see the rings. Let's move up to the 10 millimeter. Okay, using the 10 millimeter eyepiece, Saturn's rings are clearly visible, as is Saturn's largest moon, Titan. And now for the five millimeter eyepiece. Okay, it looks like I've ran this slow motion control through its full range of motion. I'm gonna need to reset that. And finally, we've got Saturn centered in the eyepiece, and it's quite a view. Okay, so the final target I'm gonna look at tonight with this telescope is a star cluster called the Pleiades. So using only the 25 millimeter eyepiece at 20 times magnification, the Pleiades fills the entire field of view with stars. It's really quite impressive. I don't think it's gonna get any better if we move up to a 10 millimeter eyepiece or all the way to five millimeters and a hundred times magnification. Wow, wow, that's absolutely fantastic. So this is using a two inch diagonal and a 20 millimeter, two inch barrel eyepiece, ultra wide angle. The view is absolutely stunning. Well, I think we put this telescope to a pretty good test. It's time for bed, well, maybe just a few more minutes. But I'm going to sign off. Have a good night. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Skywatcher Star Travel 102. Special thanks to All Star Telescope for sponsoring this video. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. Don't forget to subscribe to Learn to Stargaze so you don't miss the next video. If you're interested in Learn to Stargaze merch, check out learntostargaze.com. And remember, the future is looking up.